this thing is saying games decreasing in popularity on Android, entertainment apps on the rise. Yeah, it, it's the, the two big stories on the Google Dome, and there, there aren't many of them this week, but the two big stories are the privacy thing, which we will go into a side, but since bit spread it up, um, this is interesting. I'm surprised to see this transition happening, but basically Android users are deciding, just completely on their own, uh, that they prefer a different type of fluff. Uh, games were, across the board, the most popular apps on all mobile platforms, you know, iOS, Android, Sun, everything else. Something that has started to change in Android is that entertainment apps like Netflix, Hulu, the various TV station apps, they are overtaking the games as the primary thing. It's still fluff, but it's a different caliber of fluff. And I, and I find that... Well, iOS is going to be the game. I, they're suited for it. They're well, the, the other... sensitive UI is definitely... The other thing I think it has to do with is you're actually allowed to use these applications mobile if you want to on Android, whereas Apple, they tend to be locked to Wi-Fi only, so they're of not much use to you. You know, if I'm at home on my Wi-Fi, why do I want to watch my TV on my iPad when I have the TV right there. It's, <laughs> whereas on Android, they're like, well, do you want to watch your TV on 3G knowing that you're using data? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> exactly, that's true. That's true. And that's one of the ways in which Android, from pretty much the beginning of these apps, has had iOS beat. They let you, as the user, decide where you want to spend your money, rather than trying to protect you from yourself. You know, they pop up Take a little... Whoa! Like iTunes has seen purchase prices rise by 50%. So it's getting more expensive, mm -hmm. while Android prices have dropped. Wow, so that during iTunes app purchase price was 67 cents, while the average Android app purchase was only 9 cents. But here's another interesting twist. The average purchase price for just paid apps is higher on Android. Yeah. Then on iTunes, two dollars forty-one cents. Well, let's see. The other thing is, do you also have more advertising met, uh, revenue going on on Android than you do on iOS? And, and yeah, I think there's all, but but yeah, it should be noted. Android sees a really low number of paid downloads, but by, at not at five percent, where iTunes is twenty-two percent. Yeah. Well, it, it, the, the reality is, for the most part, on the Android platform, people are making their money on the back end with the advertising. For the most part, on the iOS platform, people are making their money on the front end selling you the app. Check this out. This is funny. It's so true for Android. Okay, number one is Pandora. Two, Facebook. Ugh. Three, isn't this ironic? Lockout mobile security. Four, Zedge ringtones. Five, advanced task killer. Yeah, you need that to actually kill your shit since uh, ice cream sandwich is just doing uh, smoke and mirrors. Handset SMS, Dolphin Browser, that's cool, The Weather Channel, TuneIn, and Gas Buddy. Alright, here's iOS, of course. Angry Birds! <laughs> yeah. Number two, Facebook. Three, Dropbox. I know, Apple users love Dropbox. Four, IMDB. Five, Pandora. And six, Angry Birds Season. Wait a minute, Should, shouldn't that just count as more Angry Birds? What? I know it's technically it's, a... It's, 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 Angry Birds is three in three times in the top ten. Yeah, it, 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 number one, Angry number Birds. Two. Number six, Angry Jesus. Birds season. Not, angry. Not, nothing sophisticated like Dolphin Browser, you know, or or uh, handset SMS and stuff. I mean, I, I don't know. The Android seems a little bit more advanced, and utility driven. The, the iOS is oh, just, and, and it's increasing. Position one, position it, six, and position nine. Angry Birds, Angry Birds Seasons, and Angry Birds Rhea. Are they for real? And then Instagram. Oh, yes, let's post pictures and shit. What? <laughs> well, it, it, um, the reality is Android is really making a strong case for becoming the productivity get work done uh, app. I mean, a uh, uh, platform. Whereas Apple is going purely after the fluff and the gamers. And, and you know, it's not like Angry Birds isn't available on Android. I have Angry Birds installed on my phone. I haven't I, played it, 
I don't want to play it. Now I, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with it. I, I, you know, I avoided it forever. I, and, and people told me, I said, what is Angry Birds? They said, don't, don't, just don't, don't mess with it, don't try it. <laughs> and then I got a Roku, and it came with Angry Birds. And I said, well, I might as well try it, just to <laughs> see. Oh, dumbest thing I ever did. <laughs> Man, I don't know, see, I, I wear thin with games. I don't know, I'm just not a... If it's not strategic in nature, so I'm, oh, I get bored extremely rapidly. Check this out. On iOS, there's definitely more focus on having fun. With three versions of Angry Birds, music and photo apps, and Netflix making a cut. The only remotely utility-like app on iOS like would be Dropbox. True. And that this guy even said it himself. So, this is cool. Very cool. Not, nothing new, though. It's the shit that I've been preaching for quite a while. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. All right. Oh, so. let's see. That was the utilitarian. It's like okay. Getting on to the privacy idea. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, Google recently decided they're just gonna merge all the Google services together and basically merge all the privacy settings together and basically state. Uh, on all your linked Google services and accounts, we're just going to imply that everything's shared everywhere and shared across and everything else. So they're doing this so their ads can follow you around better. So forget ever having your Google life separate. You know, that's basically going to become all but impossible. And this is part of why they're having to explain this to Congress. I have mixed feelings about it because it's basically a Facebook move. You know, it's going, we're going to retroactively change the services where all those parts that were only over here now apply over here and, and so on and so forth. There really isn't anything you can do about it except opt out. And uh, this, it, I saw in a lot of my Google things that they just turned on sharing that I had disabled. Basically, they reset all the privacy settings. Like yeah, Facebook is running the, you everywhere. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but but it's just like when Facebook does it. You know, you 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 go on and you say, "Don't share this, don't share this," and then Facebook just decides privacy change. Everything's been turned back on. You have to go turn it back off. And this is effectively what Google did with a lot of services when they made this change. You know, I'm not on Google Plus anymore. Nor do I have a profile. So the only thing I do have is YouTube, and that's it. Uh, well, YouTube was one of the things where privacy share yeah, settings but got no changed. Privacy. I don't have any. No, uh, but you do have privacy settings in YouTube about what actions you're doing you share with the YouTube community openly. Oh, but that, that, that's... No, I, I, I know. It's just like I, I was doing experiments and that kind of stuff. I, 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 I act as if everything I do online is being monitored anyways by everybody I've ever known online, so it's not like I have anything to really be afraid of, and I'm a pretty open person anyways, but you know, for people who value their privacy, this is a little wigged out, you know, yeah. and, and, and you know, uh, why well, I, I still give kudos to Google and the way when I cancel my Google Plus account, it was really, to the point, simple, fast. Oh, no, no. The only shining thing about Google is they make it really like five, three to five clicks, not click, 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 right, click, click. Three clicks to kill it. Yeah, it, it, you, you can kill any Google anything. Just go, die, die, do you want to die? It's like, I want to kill it. Are you sure you want to kill it? You understand yeah. by killing it that you will be killing it. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> it's like, it's, you know, but basically, you know, that is the process for killing a Google thing. Uh, however, Google is more nefarious in another way in that, you know, let's face it, it's pretty hard to use the Internet these days without. I mean, y your option is you can be a hermit and have no Googledom, but then you're a hermit and you're not really participating in the anything, you know. It's like, okay, let's see, YouTube. Blogger, G+, uh, to name but a few. I mean, we can go on all day. You know, it's the reality is um, yeah, the search. Uh, it, it, try using the Internet completely and totally avoiding Google and still having a presence that works well with other people actually finding you on the Internet without already knowing you outside of the Internet. You know, just saying, you know, that's... 
That's, that's part of why they can make it so easy for you to click out because they know, you know, okay, if you want to be stupid. <laughs> Unlike Facebook and the other ones who haven't quite succeeded yet in boxing you into the new AOL experience because that is what Facebook <laughs> is. <laughs> it's, you know, it's AOL 3.0. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> all right. All right. All right, so I guess that concludes Google, yeah? Unless you can think of it.